what comes tomorrow, I think we need to ask ourselves what we want to become. Now, I need an on honest answer from everyone. So, how many, I see a lot of young students out there in the back. So, how many of you have ever thought about uh, starting your own company? Can I see your hands? And how many of these hands, how many of you are females? I, I see no hands, I see no more. two hands there. Two females out of, I think, 20 hands I saw okay, earlier. Okay. Right? So, uh, I'll, I'll talk about my entrepreneurial journey. I started my entrepreneurial journey about three years ago. And it wasn't something uh, that uh, uh, that was outside uh, that I didn't want to do. It was something that, that just seemed more fitting, right? And I remarkably remember the time I was going to walk to my then manager. And I was with the intention of telling him that I'll be quitting the job. And I was walking to him and I was thinking, oh, this is going to be so embarrassing when, when he actually is going to ask me why you leave me a job. And I'm going to tell him that, uh, oh, I'm going to do my own startup and maybe. And I was thinking to myself, what if he laughs at me? And I was scared, I was embarrassed. And that's not, that's what we teach our girls, right? Me. A 24-year-old girl then trying to take on the world. I was scared, and it sounded absurd when you're telling your manager that you want to leave the job and you want to do your own, sorry, your own journey. So why is it unnatural for girls to start on their own in a country like India, where feminism and gender equality are considered a joke? This is what is expected. Let's talk about the FEI rankings in India. FEI stands for Female Entrepreneurship Index. FEI rankings, uh, as done in 2015, India was ranked 70 out of the 77 participating countries. And India, I mean, uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia had better rankings than India. Female, uh, for female founders, it's it's really really hard, and so I wanted to talk about some of the challenges that I face as a female entrepreneur. And by the end of this talk, I hope I would have helped some females out here who uh, who have this thing in mind and who want to start this journey themselves. So here are the few key things that are stopping females and female entrepreneurs from becoming tomorrow's leader. Number one is knowing your own worth. You may disagree with me on this. We say we teach our women to dream, to fly with the wind, but do we really mean it? It's not that we are not ambitious, it's just that we don't know what we can achieve. We just routinely undermine our own abilities. That's number one, that's what's stopping us. Number two is earning respect of your employees. It's true. This is especially an issue when you have male colleagues and they're older than you and I, I've been working for three years in a startup and I'm just 26. So I've had a lot of male colleagues who are older than me, actually even female colleagues, but this is an issue of gender inequality. So I'll talk about the male colleagues who are older than me or who came from a more decorative pedigree, uh, if you know what I mean, they were from IITs and they would not listen to anything that I have to say. So if you are a female and you ever want to leave, listen girls, if you are a female and you ever want to leave, be prepared for a gender bias that's out there in the world. And it's real. It's really, 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 real. <laughs> Disregarded. So <clears throat> the constant bickering, bad mouthing and disregard for your opinions, ideas and even decisions. It will show you everything that's wrong about society. So another story that I'm going to tell you, because stories make things better. So a few years ago, we because it's a startup, so we need to have a tech lead. So we hired a tech lead in our team. It was, I think, uh, early 2016. And uh, this guy had a lot of good experience. He had years of experience. He was good at what he did. But he never could really phantom working for me, working for a female. And th this was a guy from IIT, right? So, so every suggestion that I would make, he used to straight out ridicule them. He disregarded them and he said, 
be honest, it's not going to work. I'm not gonna. He never really said it's not going to work, but he never actually accepted any of the solutions. Now these same suggestions when made by my male colleagues, oh, he took them with utter respect. He said, oh yeah, this is going to work. <laughs> now why is that? But in this situation, soon I had to put my foot down and I had to tell them what was what was right and what had to be done. I read it somewhere that successful women, successful women are not very likable. They are bossy in nature, and uh, no one uh, they're not fun to work with. No one likes to have fun with them. Now, gender bias in workplace. Don't start early on. So if you're in college right now, or if you're thinking about gender bias right now, you won't see it because gender bias doesn't come to you in early years of your career. Gender bias will really, really come to you when you're trying to advance to a more competitive position in your workplace. And then, and then what will happen is, often for these females, they get a social pressure to assume a more traditional or a feminine role. And that's why we see a lot of HRs, and that's why our fathers tell us, you know, go to an MBA, become an HR. <laughs> Number three, the <coughs> things that are stopping us, the topic that I'm talking about, the things that are stopping us from becoming future leaders. Number three is difficult business negotiations. It's true. I'll say it how it is, and it's really hard for me to say it. But in India, it's hard to do business without often having to engage with the lower class. And don't get me wrong, when I say lower class, what I'm really hinting at is not the poor or the modest living on the daily wage, but the pompous guys we've all met and we've all hated. The uncultured, the uncivilized ones who believe in male chauvinism, the ones who believe our only place is in the kitchen. We struggle with a very systematic gender discrimination in India, and I'm again going to give you a third example. So recently, or maybe three months ago, two months ago, a designer on design base, she started working with a client. She's a freelance designer. I won't say her name or the city she's in. She's a freelance designer and she started working on a project. So uh, she has really she has really good reviews of clients and she has uh, uh, she works brilliantly. She has amazing reviews. And, uh, oh, I'm forgetting one more thing about, oh yeah, she was one of the top designers from her city. For example, if you're talking about Kochi or if you're talking about Bangalore, she was one of the top designers in there. So she, and I also know that about her, that she was really striving to set her own firm for the past two, three years, right? So she takes up this project, and this is a project of uh, 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 designing a cafe uh, in Bandra, Mumbai. So she starts this project and uh, it happens with most of us. What, ha what happened is there was a timeline delay. So for example, if you, especially if you're running a retail shop or a commercial business, you don't want these projects to run late because then you go crazy on the rent and everything. So <coughs> the guy really wanted the uh, project to finish on time, but there were some delays, uh, you things, et cetera, et cetera. And so what we really heard is, uh, the client coming to a designer or to us, not, not saying, oh, this freelance designer, oh, this business has uh, you know, uh, ruined me or uh, taken so much time, no. What he had to say was so, so gender biased. He said, Ye ladki hai isse nahi hoga. that's what he said. And that's what we hear all the time. And uh, mind you, this is a rich dude building a cafe in Bangalore, Mumbai, right? And it's 2017, I'm outraged, and because women across all the industries are still enduring some of these staggering backward attitudes. And yet, I'm optimistic because while these attitudes are, are not something new, but what's new is that we're now making the front page and we're making noise about it. And now, we, at least we're outraged together, right? And that gives me hope that there will be a better tomorrow for all of us. Now another thing that I want to talk about is that stopping us again from becoming future leaders is a poor support system or a lack of rule models. This is interesting. So let's be honest, there are 
very few female leaders in India and not just in business but in politics, sports or Bollywood, Bollywood especially where women are second considered second fiddle to men. So seriously, what, who do we look up to? Uh, are we looking up to Ellen, Ellen DeGeneres, the Oprah? So who are, okay, and don't mind me, Ellen is an icon and I love her. But we Indians, we, we, we cannot relate to them. We can't culturally or socially align with their story. They have really different stories. They have had different struggles. And we can't align with them. We can't tell ourselves that if they can, so can we. So we need to hear more success stories of Indian women. Another incident that I'll talk about and this happened last weekend. So I met a friend and we started talking about work and how things are going and we started talking about uh, the since I was giving the Senate speech we started talking about the low number of female entrepreneurs in India and he said he said you know what it's only because there are no proven strong leaders. Women are not proven strong leaders right and i said hey mind you and i broke it down to him very kindly very gently that first it's because we don't have that many role models right and second it's because the media is doing a really 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 bad job of promoting these women entrepreneurs who are actually making it and third and most importantly it's because of male colleagues like you who refuse to accept that there is a certain gender discrimination when you make a decision that's affecting or that includes supporting, funding or just communicating with a female entrepreneur. That's what I said. Last uh, talking about because I uh, am a co-founder of a startup so this was bound, this might not be true for all of you but this was bound to come for me is uh, the problems I faced when I was fundraising. And for those of you who are not familiar with the startup ecosystem, raising money is when startups take fund from investors in exchange for a, uh, shares of equity. Here's a fact for you. Out of the 670 startups funded in India in 2016, out of the 670, only 21 were founded by women. Here's a story that, no, it, this does not involve me. There's a story of Catherine Minshew, the co-founder of The Muse. The Muse is a really, really big startup in uh, US and it is an alarming example of just how many uncalled difficulties female entrepreneurs and female founders have to go through just for raising funds, right? So Minshew, Catherine, let's call her Catherine. Catherine went to many investors, right? I personally, when we were fundraising, I think I went to 20 investors and that was a lot, it's a lot of work. I went to 20 investors and we successfully raised one for a startup. Minshew, when she was uh, fundraising for a startup, she went to meet uh, investors and nobody would hear her pitch. And the ones who did hear her pitch, Catherine said, these people, they mistook her leadership qualities and her confidence for, they mistook her like, oh, she's charming. Not, not be, they didn't think, oh, she can become a good leader. No, they said, she's charming. That's what they said. So, and even later when the, her pitch was heard, this is the reaction she got. And she had to meet, mind you, 20 VC firms to just raise funds for her startup. So, all, of all these problems, what does the future hold for us? Because, as you all know, we are talking about the future right now. We say that it's equal for both men and women, but it's not. It's a whole lot harder to start off as a woman, and I know that. But how do we fix these things? Will creating awareness help? Do we need more feminist campaigns? No, we don't. We don't. We cannot force it down a society who is not ready to accept any change, who is not willing to change. A society is not. In a free market, it's the economic forces that win, right? So we, so these economic forces, they win and they need to bring down the change. And if we need these economic forces to bring down the change, we need to tell the world, the worth 
of female entrepreneurs. We enable these market forces by proving the worth of female entrepreneurs. If your actions in the next decade that will pay the future for that paved the way for future women, right? And this is something that I heard and I really like it, whoever said it. And I think this was one of the TED Talks where I heard it. And she said, the only future we are going into, the only future we are going into is the one we create right now.